Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm gonna give you the top 10 reasons why Nikon, the Z6, and the Z7 cameras did not beat Sony. So let's jump into our list. Number one, there's only one memory card slot. Yes, one. So for me as a wedding photographer, this is absolutely a deal breaker. I knew you would do this! I knew it! As a wedding photographer, you rely a thousand percent on your camera, but also on your memory cards. So knowing that you're only shooting on one during the most important day of somebody's life is just scary. I have approximately 20 SD memory cards and I'm rotating these cards. So I'm not even using the same card every single shoot. And yet I still have had four card failures just in this past year. Speaking of memory cards, going into number two are XQD cards. These cameras only use XQD cards, and let me just tell you, if you didn't know, nobody uses XQD cards anymore. There's very few cameras that even make cameras with XQD cards. I honestly can't even really think of any cameras that you would be using now that use XQD cards. So Lexar used to manufacture XQD cards, but Lexar also went bankrupt. I thought you were dead. XQD is dead. Sony, of course, manufactures these XQD cards, but why would a Nikon shooter want to buy from a competitor? Like, what if Sony all of a sudden just decided to say, well, screw you, Nikon, we're gonna stop making these cards. I mean, that would just be a complete, I couldn't even imagine that feeling. Let's also hope that Sony doesn't raise the price on these cards, so this way they become so unaffordable that you wouldn't even be able to buy the memory cards as well as what you're paying already for the camera. Who the world? Sony, Sony. Oh. Number three, oh, number three, definitely goes to the lenses. The lenses that Nikon came out with are just disgusting, except one. The 0 0.95 lens. I'm actually really excited for. If Sony had a lens like this, I would love to give it a try. But unfortunately, this lens is something that Nikon isn't even pushing right now, so you're not gonna have it for quite some time. The main lens that Nikon is actually promoting is their F4 lens. Who wants an F4 lens? I can't even think of the last time that I used an F4 lens. And to be honest, when I do think about it, it was when I was buying like my first Nikon D90 camera and it came with like a kit lens that was like F4. For me, I'm doing events. So of course you need to be able to have those lenses that have great glass at a 2.8. F4 is just way too high. What they should have done is actually release the 0.95 lens first. That would have at least made us say, okay, that's different. But no, they chose to release the F4. This brings us to number four, eye autofocus. When I'm buying a camera, there's two things that I'm always looking for. Number one, image quality. And number two, what is the focusing like? Remember, I'm doing weddings, guys. So as the bride is coming down the aisle, I need to make sure that every single shot is in focus. So the focus for me is extremely important. So for me, this is an absolutely another deal breaker. The focusing system and lenses are the most important thing when it comes to choosing a camera system. No matter how great the Nikon 45 megapixel is, if the focusing system is slow or can't track as well and you miss focus, the 45 megapixels won't compensate for bad focusing. Why would I want to see a blurry shot in 45 megapixels? And hitting us at number five, just from the top four, you can already see, the number five is really, Nikon didn't innovate. When a new camera comes out, you have to beat what already is on the market. And if you don't beat it, then no one's gonna buy it. It's really as simple as that. So knowing that they came out with this camera, and they're not even beating Sony, which is number one right now, there's no way that I'm gonna actually switch back to Nikon as a pro. And if I was a photographer that was doing Nikon right now, I would be scared. And this was them planning for something new and something big. I mean, they like promoted this as like the thing. 
But now we can see this was not the thing. This wasn't even a thing. This wasn't even like in the realm of what us as professionals wanted. Number six, the camera only shoots in 4K at 30 frames per second. Panasonic has been giving us 4K at 60 frames. So the fact that the Nikon Z6 and Z7 can't do this is just, again, like a major fail. Now you just got rid of videographers wanting to use this camera. And I just don't see how this is a good thing. Number seven, the battery life. Yeah, it's pretty much dead. The battery life for pictures is only 330 pictures for the battery. Sony will actually give you double. And for me, this is a really big plus is because when I'm doing events, I don't have time to keep changing my battery. Everything's already so fast paced that knowing that my battery is gonna die when I'm just finishing the getting ready and maybe some of the formals, it's just crazy to know that just on like one wedding day, I'm gonna have to have at least five batteries, five. Just to shoot a wedding, just because of the fact that it'll only give me 330 shots. Crazy. Number eight. One of the things that I think Nikon forgot to mention and really emphasize is if you don't buy their new F4 lenses and the other lenses that they are releasing, then you're gonna actually have to buy a converter which costs $300 in order to attach your lenses that you currently have. So your older lenses, in order to use them, you're gonna actually have to buy that converter. So in a sense, Nikon is really tacking up the price point of their camera because of the fact that unless you have money to spend, who's gonna be changing out all of their lenses right at the beginning? No, you wanna probably shoot with the camera first, try it out, make sure that you really love it, and then you might say, okay, you know what, this is great, I'm gonna upgrade and get the new F4 lens. But the fact that right off the bat, they're not even including that into the camera sale is kind of a bummer because that price point isn't really 2,000 and 3,400. That price point is really 2,200 and 3,600. Which is way more than what the Sony cost. Keep in mind that any adapter that you are gonna put onto your camera is never gonna be as good as you actually mounting the lens directly onto your camera body. So knowing that you're gonna have that extra piece of glass for shooting plus the extra weight is something that you really should consider. From my experience, when I first got the Sony system, I was actually using my Nikon glass and used an adapter from Sony to Nikon. And with that, I actually had two of my Metabone adapters break because my lenses were so heavy. So keep that in mind because if you do end up buying this adapter for your Nikon lenses, Nikon lenses are very heavy. So you wanna make sure that it's not just gonna break off. So I went on Nikon's website and I was looking at the specs of this adapter. And one of the things that I thought was so interesting is they tell you all the lenses that you can have in it, but what they also add is restrictions may apply. Restrictions may apply. You're promoting us to get this adapter to use our old Nikon lenses with, and then you're gonna put, if we use it, restrictions may apply. So indirectly, you're forcing us to upgrade to an F4 lens. Why? I mean, it's just, it doesn't make sense. Number nine, price point. So the price point, yes, is comparable to the Sony, but when you add in all of the things from one through nine, do you really think that the price is fair? The Z7 is more expensive than the Sony a7R 3 yet it didn't even beat it, it didn't even match it. Think about it, when you already consider adding in that extra adapter, when you possibly need to consider buying another lens just to be able to have a lens that works directly with the camera, think about how much your price actually goes up. And lastly, bringing us in at number 10 is the Nikon Z7 and Z6 don't even have a stack sensor. So just like in Sony, how you can take multiple photos and be able to stack them all together, yeah, this camera doesn't do that. So in closing, these are my top 10 reasons as to why Nikon did not beat Sony. But we'll see if maybe they can come out with something new. Maybe next year? I just want you to know that I used to shoot Nikon for a very long time, over 10 years. So I'm very familiar with the camera system. And since I've actually switched 100% over to the Sony system, I will have to say I won't look back. 
Mirrorless systems are definitely the future of camera technology. So if you're shooting with a DSLR, you definitely should start looking at what other camera systems are coming out. Sony by far is number one, whether if you're shooting photography or video. Canon is hopefully gonna be close behind with a new mirrorless system, but Nikon showed us their cards and you can judge for yourself.